Hello everyone, Anthony Hebel here, AKW Blazer 91, and <clears throat> today I'm going to be doing one of these games I've bought this month video. I go through games I've been purchasing path this path this whole month. I've got and this one. I've already got bought in two games this month because. I've been concentrating on the E3 this month. I've been talking about some of the live E3 conferences and all the games announced there that I'm looking forward to seeing. That I'm looking forward to seeing released. I'll be going through all those in a moment. So all your thoughts on that, and then I'm going to be talking about. What I have been doing and what I will be focusing on next. So, let's get right to the games I've bought. First up, Street Fighter, 30th Anniversary Collection. This is a Street Fighter compilation featuring 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12 um, street, <laughs> street Fighter games from the original Street Fighter to Street Fighter Third Strike, Street Fighter Three Third Strike, and it also comes with, and it also includes Street Fighter One, uh, uh, sorry, Street Fighter Two, Super Street Fighter Two Half uh, Champion Editions, Street Fighter Two Hyper Fighting, Super Street Fighter Two, Super Street Fighter Two Turbo, and so on. I mean, if you grew up in the arcades playing Street Fighter. This is a welcome addition to your collection. I mean, it's got, I mean, it's got all the, um, all the current, all the old school Street Fighter games, all in one package. And you can play, or was it, um, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, uh, Alpha 3, and Third Strike Online, in which um, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo is the toughest Street Fighter 2 variant. Alpha 3 is the more, more refined Street Fighter Alpha game, and Third Strike is the refined Street Fighter 3. Now, I didn't grow up a lot with Street Fighter. The only Street Fighter game I grew up with was <clears throat> the Super NES port of um, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting, which is what they call, <clears throat> which was what the Super Nintendo version was called. <clears throat> And I remember playing that a lot um, as a kid, and I do, and I and I have it on the and I have that on the virtual console. But now I have all these Street Fighter games all together, and it's still great fun. And I have finished Street Fighter One, Street Fighter Two, and uh, Street Fighter Two Champion Edition. There's like trophies for finishing the games, and there's a trophy for getting a Akuma. Or was it Fighting Akuma in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo? On which, if you can do that without continuing, you deserve a pat on the back because the game is is just brutally hard <clears throat> because of the overly aggressive AI. The AI is more aggressive, and you have to really know how to defeat the AI on it. But it's not anything like Mortal Kombat. It's kind of on the level of Mortal Kombat, the classic Mortal Kombat games, where the AI just cheats, <clears throat> just cheats you constantly. But still, this is a worth. This is a worthy collection, and it's got me back into fine games, along with Blaze Blue Cross Type Battle. I know, I know some people are going to I'm going to pronounce it Blaze Blue. But I think it's meant to be pronounced Blaze Blue. I'm not 100% sure. This is another fighting game series, but this is a crossover style fighting game series where it features characters from Persona 4 Earth and Undernight Inbirth. I've never heard of Undernight Inbirth, but I do know it's from uh, Eco. And Eco were the guys responsible for making D 
Death Crimson Marks, a game I had for the PlayStation 2, which was one of the worst light gun games I've ever created of all time. No joke. I, I used to have Death Crimson Marks for the PS2, which was Gun Comp, which was released over here as Gun Comp 2, which I'm which I'm well aware. So anyway, back to this one. But here, but here's the big shocker. This is the one that got me to get the game the most. Ruby. Ruby is in this. Ruby Rose, my Schnee, and also two of their um, our team Ruby, uh, Blake and Yang are in it as well as DLC. Blake and Yang are are in the game as DLC, <laughs> which is a bit of a bump, which is a bit of a bugger. But yeah, the more I saw, what is it, Ruby be featured in this game, I literally just screamed out. <laughs> Ruby is in is coming to Blaze Blue, a fighting game series, and I thought to myself, yeah, this is got <laughs> this is got to deliver. And it does. I haven't played much of it, just mainly just me getting to learn the game and just playing a couple of offline matches with, with myself, with the AI, before I can actually play the story. <clears throat> because these fighting games, because these new, because these Arc System work fighting games, they require a bit of time to learn and master. And they're not entirely beginner friendly in some cases. But even though that, I'm happy to have this. <laughs> I recently got this last week and I'm happy to have this one in my collection. <clears throat> I've also, and now I'm going to talk about the E3. As oh boy, I've been, over the past week, I've been doing a bit of is E3 blogging where um, I talk about some of the companies and what games they've announced during the E3 live conferences and I've done those and eventually I, I, I made on my GameSpot um, account uh, the winner and the loser of the E3 showcasing and then I highlighted 10 of the most anticipated my 10 games of E3. So I'm going to be talking about just a few games that has called my interest. Like, um, before I mentioned, before I um, talk about the 10 games of E3. Like, some of the games announced at E3 were really good. Um, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Switch, where it will feature like all the playable characters from the, from the Super Smash Bros. universe all together. And he announced two of the new uh, fighters, Inkling and Ripley from Metroid. Uh, Inkling from Splatoon, I, <clears throat> I should say as well. Uh, Battlefield 5 is called My Interest. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, I've seen a look at that. <clears throat> where, they, where they talked about all the new Disney worlds. Toy Story, Monsters Inc, uh, Pir Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, Tangled, and Frozen as well. It all looks really cool. Uh, and then I saw the and then I saw on Sony conference Call of Duty Black Ops Four. Now that one's the more more of a piss take to me because. You've already got the Black Ops trilogy, and they all had the single player stories, which were good. The first and the second were good. The third was kind of like more different, far more different than the others. And then, the, and then what happened? And then, uh, and then you got Black Ops Four. Which will not have a single player mode. And that just really pisses me off. I mean you had the other three Black Ops games. Like I'll show you now. I got this one here. Black Ops 3. And I got the other two on the PS3 as well. I also plan to get a PS3 version of this. Just for trophy collection purposes.
Mm, right. Yeah. So I was saying, um, I'm going to get the PS3 version of Black Ops 3, and yeah, the Black the PS3 and the Xbox 360 versions of Black Ops 3, they, they ignored the single player components because of like, the limitations of the PS3 and the Xbox 360 consoles. But now we're on the PS4 and they announced Black Ops 4, <clears throat> which will not have a single player campaign. That just baffles me on every. That just baffles me on every level. But yet they announced um, some of the classic maps will be returning to Black Ops 4, and those classic maps will also be on Black Ops 3 if you pre-ordered it on the PSN store. B, can't be fast. So I thought I'd talk a bit about that. <clears throat> Right, so now we're going to get on to the main event. Talking about the games of E3. I've got, I've got on my side there some of the 10 games that I've been... That I liked, that I liked throughout the E3 show, showings. Throughout all of the conferences. First up, Anthem. From Bioware. Bioware has really been the sort of company that makes dozens of these fantastic games. I mean they made they made the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, they made the amazing Mass Effect series and, it's, and they're starting something new with Anthem and yeah it's been delayed um, I think I'm not 100% sure on that I could be reading it, I, I probably would get, I'm probably guessing wrong but Anthem is really one of those so the Bioware games that's going to go deep into story lore with the, with, with the world and the characters and the combat's going to be just as tight and enjoyable as, they, as those games so there's going to be a ton of death with those I can get so Anthem's going to really be no different but I'm really looking forward to seeing it because it's, it's got because it's got those um, giant things on there called javelins and I think and I really like the look of those next up is Rage 2 <laughs> I saw it and I saw a, a trailer about it discussing the story and it showed actually some very brutal gameplay of it and I actually do have Rage right here I do have Rage on the PS3 I've only, I've only played it I've only got this second hand and it doesn't include the um, some of the stuff like the Dogwell shotgun and stuff doesn't include the code for it but either way um, Rage, was an awesome, Rage was an awesome game from id Software and Avalanche Studio <laughs> from id Software so I'm really looking forward to what they do with the sequel. It, it really is incredible. <clears throat> Next is Control from Remedy. The guys who worked on the old Max Payne games and they also worked on Quantum Break. This one also stood on my bit of curiosity because um, on the surface it looks like a third person game but you use parts of the environment as the as your weapon against against the enemies. So that's also stirred up um, a little bit of interest. I think there were interviews showcasing the story or something but I don't think I saw it. Next is Metro Exodus which is another game which is the next game in the Metro series. There's I have Metro Last Light on the PS3, here it is. I haven't dove into Metro at all, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with Metro Exodus, and it will hopefully get me interested to go through Metro Last Night and the Metro HD remake on the PS4. Yes, I know there's an HD remake of HD port of um, Last Light for the PS4, which also includes the original game on there, I think. 
Next up is The Last of Us Part 2. The showcase they show for that is just incredible. The way the story builds up for Ellie. And how she's gone into a list of sort of lesbian love, um, love interest is actually very seamless and really believable. I mean, you got the ma I mean, The Last of Us is a truly is a true masterpiece and one of the best games on the PS3. And there's also a PS4 remake also, which I'm also going to be willing to get. This is my um, game of the year edition. I picked up and I was lucky to have all the content intact. For me, so I was really happy getting it for 8 quid and with all this content. How can I say no to that? And I'm really looking forward to seeing how the story goes with Ellie and that will help me, that will also inspire me to do The Last of Us as well. The Last of Us 1 and The Last of Us Remastered for the PS, <laughs> PS4. Oh, another thing that did um, stir me up during the E3 is when I saw when I went to some of the Square Enix um, announcements. A lot of the announcements were weak. I mean, they did talk about Kingdom Hearts 3 and Octopath Traveler, but a lot, but everything else was just rather just sort of weak. <clears throat> I mean, everybody wanted to hear about the Final Fantasy VII Remake because Square Enix has scrapped all the work um, that um, CyberConnect uh, Cyber has done and they're redoing it from scratch and people are... T and now... Uh, nobody knows what exactly it's going to be like now. And, and, pe and people are reckoning it's going to take just as long as... Um, what is it? Maybe Final Fantasy 15? And yeah, that's another thing as well. With Final Fantasy 15, I'll just bring it up here. Here it is. Uh, Square Enix didn't even... Square Enix during their conference didn't even say anything about the Final Fantasy 15 content. They said nothing. They didn't give any announcements for like... They didn't say anything about like the the long rumors and um, extra DLC episodes that they've been keeping te that they've been teasing for a while for the past month or two, which is why I've been doing all of these DLC episodes for the main characters. And it's likely they it's likely they'll announce it in the future. Because they have been doing more because they're still milking the shit out of Final Fantasy 15. And they're still milking the shit out of 14 as well because they announced um more uh content for 14 online. Around the board of Stone Blood now, is this called whatever? Alas, oh, yeah. Now we're going back into the uh, main events. Uh, Doom Eternal. I'm looking forward to that. Because the 2016 Doom reboot was amazing. It was one of the best that they've ever done. It was one of the best FPSs this generation has seen yet. I haven't touched the multiplayer yet, but I've, mo but I've mainly tackled a bit of the single player. I want to do this game during my Doom Marathon on December 2018. That's going to be a thing I'm announcing right now. Dece December 1st, 2018, I'm going all out Doom. I'm going to hell. Like what Doom Guy is. Just like what Doom Slayer is doing right now. He's gone to hell. And every, and every single demon is going to be begging for mercy. Because Doom Slayer he takes no fucking crap from any demon. And by the way, apologies for my language. I just wanted to get that off my chest. Doom's, do we turn on? It's going to hopefully be bigger, more massive than um, than this one was. I mean, how can you perfect? How can you improve in an otherwise already perfect game? Well, 
What's the answer? Just try. Uh, big, bigger demons, bigger guns. I'd like to see what what they do with the glory kills next. With that, because wow, the original Doom, the Doom's 2016 reboot, the glory kills on that were just brutal. Right, so next one, Resident Evil 2 remake. We've been desperate for a Resident Evil 2 remake after Resident Evil 1 remake was incredible. And I have got the original Resident Evil games on the PS1, including this one here, Resident Evil 2. Which was, Resident Evil 2 was one of the most highly regarded sequels in the Resident Evil franchise. And so... When we saw that, when we learned that Resident Evil 2 was, was going to come to the GameCube, what we got was just a port alongside Resident Evil 3. It was just ports of the original games. Just lazy ports and lazy ports in that. I didn't like the ports at all. They were all just running on the on the same graphics line on the PS on the, on the PS1 version. They didn't improve the graphics at all. It just looked choppy, muddy, and I just thought, yeah, they're just shoddy ports. So now we're getting the Resident Evil 2 remaster, which will redo the whole storyline, the dialogue. Literally everything will be rebuilt from scratch and from the ground up, like what the original Resident Evil was. If you played the 2002 remake on the GameCube, the original Resident Evil, you notice how like literally everything from the cutscenes, the story, and the character dialogue was all rebuilt from scratch to make it more scary. Uh, and they're doing it with Resident Evil 2 now, and it'll be. And I've seen a trailer. It looks awesome. That's going to make me want to go through Resident Evil 2. My, car, my, my PS1 copy in the future. Can't wait for it. Next is was Death Stranding. Hideo Kojima's next new project. After leaving Konami. After the whole Konami feud back in 2015. When was it? They cancelled PT. But teased in the um, Silent Hills game, which everyone, which everyone all dived into, at the same time everyone thought it was going to be incredible, and then Konami just ditched um, Kojima, who once kept that entire company afloat. He was the only man who kept Konami afloat this this whole decade, and now with him gone. I don't see how Konami is going to get any better. Even with all these Pajinko machines they still have going. But either way, the new Death Stranding game. The trailer on it actually shows a lot of promise. They've seen, they teased quite a bit about the story and how it's going to be evolving itself through through life and death. And I'll have this sort of open world experience and stuff. I'm actually really looking forward to um, well, how Death Stranding is going to be like. And, and considering this is a Hideo Kojima game, we're expecting greatness out of Kojima. Next up, Devil May Cry 5. I saw that trailer, it just came out of nowhere. Like, out of nowhere. It was just like, we were expecting some sort of. You know, I, when I saw that trailer, I was probably guessing, oh, some sort of new IP from Capcom. But no, it's. It's a return of Devil May Cry. There are five things to say about that. Number one, Nero's back. 
Number two, Dante's back. And he's got his proper hair look. He's got his proper hairstyle color. Yeah, he looks like an old man or something, because you see him at the end of the trailer on a motorcycle. But when you see him having fun on a motorcycle, <laughs> yep, Dante's still got that like attitude. I think from the old games, something. And it's been a while since we've seen a Devil May, a true Devil May Cry game, because we for ten years since Devil May Cry Four. And I know there was like the Devil May Cry reboot, the 2013 reboot done by, oh was it, Team, Team Ninja, where they really, really, really fucked up Dante bad. Because they changed his hair, hairstyle look and, and, it, and he made him into a total prick. I mean, I, I heard rumors about it, right? before I picked up this copy, before I picked up my own copy of DMC Reboot. I'm probably thinking that, uh, this new Dante kind of couldn't be that Dante, or this Dante can't be that bad. But I played it for myself, and boy was I wrong. It is, it changed Dante and, turned him, and made him into an asshole. He was, a, he was just a massive twat, twat on all scale. He's just, he's now, he's now like this sort of moody, moody dipshit. I and mean, and he doesn't have the same attitude as the previous Dante's in the other games. It's almost on the level of Devil May Cry 2. Well, like, they really took a bit of a downturn here. But this, but this time it's not Capcom's fault, it's Team It's Ninja Fury's fault. That's it. Ninja Fury. It's nin it was Ninja Fury's fault that they took um <laughs> that they took um Devil May Cry and just literally took Dante and just made him into a total asshole into what he is. But now, see, and now this new trailer, it's reviewed. It's revealed Dante back. Even though the Bell even the Devil May Cry director is back, almost back on the scene. The proper Devil May Cry director. I can't, I can't, I can't remember, remember his name. I don't, I don't really, I'm not really good at pronouncing Japanese names, by the way. I do know that the proper Devil May Cry director and the Capcom and the Cap and the Capcom director as well. They're back on the scene. Hideki Isuno, I think. You guys can correct me on this. I'm back on the I'm back. And number three, Virgil's back as well. Uh, and what were the other things I said? Uh, yeah, the, the director, the pro directors is back as well, like can you number four. And number five, that music trailer is sick. And I can also praise that Johnny on Bosch is back as well, doing the voice of Nero as well. I know, I know some people might not like Nero, but hearing Johnny on Bosch is acting again, yeah, it's going to be promising. And apparent, and from what I've seen in the trailer, there's going to be there's a lot of things I'm curious to know about this sequel. About this sequel, I mean, there's so much of Nero. Dante and Virgil, I really want to ask, but I think the best way to get my answers is to wait for the game to come out, and to play through the story, and let the story speak for itself. That would be my, that would be my ultimate recommendation. So I'm really looking forward to see what they really do with Devil May Cry 5. I'm just gonna sit. I'm just gonna wait and get and get the company a chance and give it a chance because if they can redeem Street Fighter, if they can redeem the Street Fighter franchise, and if they can redeem Resident Evil with Resident Evil Seven, put the series and they it could 
Hear it. Mm -hmm. All right, so here we go. Um, yeah, so if they, if they can redeem Street Fighter, which is Street Fighter Five um, Arcade Edition and Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, if they can redeem Resident Evil with Resident Evil Seven uh, and the Resident Evil Two remake announcement, there's then there's a chance Devil May Cry will get that double S redemption. That, that fans have been wanting out of the series. I really like that Devil Trigger song that play that has been playing that plays through the trailer, and I've been watching like various reaction videos of it as well. <laughs> oh my goodness, the reactions are just so priceless. Right, and now, number one. The number one um, game shown at E3 is, will be an absolute shocker. It's the one I'm a fan of the series for. It's the series I've been following for a long, long time. Everyone see me talk, talk so much stuff about it. And, after all this time, all the announcement, all the talk from a certain company. I gotta say this guys. I'm just can't say it too well because I'm too excited to announce to talk to, to talk or announce it. But the game that's also to do with the whole hype of E3. Here it is, Tales of Asperia Definitive Edition, and here's my copy of the Xbox 360 version, right here. That's right, Tales of Asperia Definitive Edition. It's coming back for next-gen consoles. We've been waiting, <coughs> we waited a long time for this. Tales of Asperia, the, the highly praised best entry in the Tales franchise and a fan favorite of all, and a fan favorite, an instant fan favorite, is coming to the next gen consoles. The PS4, the Xbox One, the Nintendo Switch, and the PC. You probably would know. You probably would not have guessed this, because there have been there were there were rumors going out that there was going to be a remake of sorts for the that there was going to be like um, an HD a remake update of this. But at the best possible time during the what is it? Oh, what is it the ten? They announced um, an anniversary website that would have possibly announced something to do with Tales of Asperia and then the E3 came out and this trailer played during the Microsoft during the Microsoft conference and it, I just can't say it up. I just can't express it well enough it came out of nowhere and the, and the biggest utmost time to announce it is during the Microsoft conference. Lily, I was screaming. I was I was break I was I was literally broken by that announcement alone. And I'm not afraid to admit this but I actually broke into tears when I saw the Tales of Spirit Definitive Edition announcement. And they've actually announced it. It's going to be coming out this winter. That means we might get it in um, early. This, we might get it uh, November or December, which will be brilliant. I've been wanting. I mean, like we wanted full updated Tales of Asperia for a long time, and Bandai Namco was getting like this sort of. 
not so keen, wasn't so keen with it for a while because yeah, we got Tales of Asperia for the Xbox 360 and there was a PlayStation 3 updated that was only released in Japan which added all this new content which the Xbox 360 version did not have like um, Glenn being fully playable as this guy, as that guy over there it's the blind guy over there uh, a new character, Patty Fleur, the young pirate girl and it had all sorts of new dungeons, new bosses that we did not get, for the, and we didn't see in English. But now, with the, but now with definitive edition, it will have all this new. It will have all the new content for the very first time in English. And I can't wait for it. The P, I'm hoping the PC port of it will do good. Unlike the Tales of Symphonia PC port. <clears throat> I won't go into detail about the PC port of Tales of Symphonia. I recommend you check that. I recommend you check out my review of the PC port of Tales of Symphonia on my GameSpot channel for that info. Uh, so yeah, I'm absolutely beyond happy that we're finally getting Tales of Xperia on the, the next gen consoles. I'm hoping the same will be done with Tales of Destiny, the remake. Because April Fools had a um, possible Tales of Destiny rumor, but it's likely just going to be another one of them April Fools pranks. Who knows? And I hope a, Tales of Fan a proper Tales of Fantasia version. That will be the cross edition. A remake of Naraku Dungeon Cross for next gen. So oh yeah, these are my games of E3. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna fully talk about uh, the games I'm gonna be doing. Now first up, boosting sections. Uh, now I actually will talk. Yeah, go ahead, I'll talk about the boosting sections. Now, my, I've got three games that I'm going to be boosting on. Two games, actually. Uh, I'll show them now. There's 007 Legends and Orkana Heart 3, both on the PS3. And I've started some good progress, and I've had some good progress on this. I'm not, and I've gotten a group going on this one, so we're hopefully getting a group ongoing with with our Double Seven Legends. I'm going to be doing. Also, if I can get in contact with the with the person, uh, who launched the Okana Heart Free group, so I can do some more of Okana Heart Free online, so I can get the trophies on that one. Before I then tackle the um, the single before the single player and the story mode, I've already done like the time trial mode. I'm beating one of the most notoriously hard bosses in gaming. Mm, so I'm looking really looking for. So I'm gonna hope to get the, some boosting going on this game, on those two games, maybe Double Seven Legends. I want to get that out the way, way so I can start. Possibly another game, Atomic Ninjas on the Vita or Quantum Fury on the PlayStation 3. I'm really hoping to just start that one. And with a kind of heart, maybe also, I, I plan to also do this version of a kind of heart 3, the Love Max Edition on the Vita. And if I can also find it for the PS3, I'll do that as well. What if it's possible with the Vita version and the PlayStation 3 version of this of this game to connect with each other? I sure hope so. Might be cost compatible or something. Sure, I would like that. So those are those are going to be what I'm going to be doing, boosting wise with other players online. And now is the overall next. And now, guys, I'm going to talk about. The next project. I put this game off for um, I put this game off for far too long, guys. 
Right, here's another jump cut. Right, I'll put this game off too long, guys. It's time to talk about my next project now, after since I finished Final Fantasy XV and all the trophies. The next game I'm going to be doing is Cyber Dimension Neptunia Focus Online. I'm finally going to play a Net Net game. I'm finally going to start the Neptunia game, a Neptunia game, and this is one of the Neptunia games that's gotten me interested in the franchise. And also with the, and also thanks to um, a video from Thomas Bybee's old channel, where he talked about the Hyper Dimension Neptunia franchise on his PS on the on the PlayStation 3 and the Vita versions as well, I think, as well. I, it then got me to look into the series, and I learned, and then I suddenly come across this one, Cyber Dimension Neptunia. And then after, then after seeing the announcement from my, and after seeing this one, the gameplay video of that one, it's kind of gotten me interested because parts of it, parts of the battle system, kind of reminds me of 15 in a way. And I have played it, played a bit of it, but I haven't fully gotten fully gotten into it yet. But this time, starting tonight, when I come back from pool, I'm going to start a playthrough on this one. And I will sh I'm seeing that I think this is um, video recording compatible. I'm going to do some, I'm going to do a YouTube playthrough of this game. Whilst in between this one, I've also got two other games I'm gonna I'm gonna do. <clears throat> it's kind of like a sort of a break in between I'm um, doing Simon and Mention Neptunia. I'm going back to Brink on the PS3 because I have two more trophies I need to finish up. One is getting the audio logs and one is going through the game on the hardest difficulty either online. Either playing it on the hardest difficulty or playing the game online. I'm actually just going to go through the game just on the hard, just on the normal and hard difficulties with both the security and the the resistance sides. And I've gotten 90 percent of the trophies. All I just need is the audio logs and playing the game on the hardest difficulty on both sides plus the what if um, storylines. I don't think I don't think the DLC storylines really count. So who knows? And last up, I will be continuing this, playing this game online, before I eventually decide to tackle the story. Because I want to play the story, and I want, and I'm curious to see what happens in it myself. No spoilers. If you guys haven't, if you guys have finished the game already, say nothing about it. I want to see it for myself, and I haven't started the campaign on it yet. So I want to start Star Wars Battlefront 2, the 2017 version. I want to see what happens in it because I'm very curious to see what goes on on it. Because this was the Star Wars game that had that at least has a single player game, a single player story, unlike the 2015 reboot over there had. I might install it on my PS4 now because I, I've uninstalled Final Fantasy XV off my PS4 and I've got more space for what is it, the PSN Plus games I want to do that I've just been playing as well I should say not I want to do but I have been playing just to register the trophies so that's going to be it so that's going to be my announcements I'm going to be playing this is my next game, and I'm going to be having, and then in between it, if I'm, if I'm bored, I can just play on an FPS game if I'm just either don't want to grind on this game, or I just want to play an FPS game for a change, just to change, just to change it up. So here it is, Nep Nep is going to be next, Nep Nep. <laughs> I'm possessed by the net map now because I'm really curious about the Neptunia games 
I've also got the, because I have got the original Hyper Dimension Neptunia game on the PS3, and I've got Mega Dimension Neptunia V2 as well. Yeah, so the three of the Neptunia games I have. And I am looking to get the other Neptunia games as well. There was one of the Neptunia games, I think Rebirth 3 on the Vita, which was like a remake of Hyper Dimension Neptunia Victory. That appeared in Newport, but some guy got lucky and took it before I could. But I'm hoping to get, uh, but I'm hoping next time I'll get lucky and I can purchase it before some twit done. Before some twit actually does. So, I'm going to be looking forward to doing this one because I've actually got a bit of net, some net napping in my head right now. <laughs> so yeah, I can't wait to start this one off. I'm going to have a, I'm going to, I'm going to laugh at it. As if I heard that there's going to be, there's like all these fourth wall breaking gaming jokes of it. <laughs> Like I remember in the original one, Neptune breaks a 4-4 and throws a Sonic reference at the very start of the game. <laughs> I just started laughing. <laughs> I love that Sonic joke. That Sonic reference. Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? Can I move around? <laughs> Don't blame me if I start to collect rain that's floating by the ground. <laughs> That's Sonic the Hedgehog. I mean, that's Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> when a game starts out with a Sonic the Hedgehog reference, you just know something's gonna be. F you just know a game like that is gonna be phenomenal. I have heard it's deeply flawed. I'm sure I. Oh, it doesn't turn out to be that bad, right? <laughs> I'll see when I eventually do decide to go through the go through all the Neptunia games. So now there's all the, I know there's all the other Neptunia games, and there's a new one coming out as well. Two of it. There's, I know there's a new one that's out now, Mega Dim which is actually Mega Dimension Neptunia B2 Art, which is a remake of uh, what was it? This one here, Mega Dimension Neptunia V2. No, and, and I know you're not a lot of you're thinking, is this, is this meant to be called Mega Dimension Neptunia 7? No, it's not. It's actually meant to be pronounced Mega Dimension Neptunia V2, otherwise known as Mega Dimension Neptunia Victory 2. <laughs> yeah, that's a fucking mouthful right there. <clears throat> so I'm really looking. So I'm looking to get them the Mega Dimension Neptunia V2 R for my birthday because I have been trying to track uh, track down the um, uh, what is it? Mega Dimension of Tunia V2R, but they didn't have it in stock. Maybe it's because like it's an obscure game and nobody talks about it. So who knows? I'll probably ask you for my birthday instead. And there's a new Neptunia game I've heard about. I've recently did look up some reports about Brave Neptunia, which is gonna be known as Super Neptunia RPG over here in the West. Which is, which is now, which is going to be like a side-scrolling RPG game. Very similar to Valkyrie Profile. I've never played Valkyrie Profile, but I kind of understand what what, the, what people are saying about it. From the screenshots, from the screenshots shown. And I think it's going to be more of a, and I think it's going to go back to the turn-based style of the I think it's going to go back to that um, turn-based style to see the developing program get profile games with had as well. Maybe who knows? So that is everything that is going to be announced. So tonight, guys, I will eventually start a playthrough on Cyber Dimension Neptunia for Goddess Online for the PS4, and and I hope you guys will check that one out. I've been wanting to do that game for quite a while. Alright, last jump cuts here.
And so yeah, I'm going to do a playthrough of Slower Dimension Neptunia Four Glasses, Four Glasses Online for the PS4. To let you guys know, it's not an online game. It's a single player game, but it does have some sort of online component for it. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't fully checked it out myself yet, but tonight I will fully check this game out. See what all that, see what all this Neptunia on, see what all the Neptunia world is. And I know I'm gonna be ending up laughing my head off. I'm gonna possibly start crying <laughs> in laughter. I'm gonna start tearing in laughter from all the full full jokes. No joke. Neptunia is like. Deadpool of anime, who is who is self-aware and, and is, is not afraid to break the fourth wall. He knows, he knows we're there, and he knows we want to have fun and making fun of it as much as humanly possible. So, I hope you guys will check out my Neptunia. So I'm going to mention Neptunia playthrough tonight when I start posting the videos, and I hope to see you all next time in the next video so take care of yourselves and goodbye